To perform a pressure calibration, a technician needs three things. A device to test, a device to provide a reference, and a way to generate pressure. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the equipment that accomplishes these functions, as well as the applications that require them. The pressure device being tested is often called the device under test or unit under test, and can be any of the devices shown in part three of this video series. In order to be able to calibrate the DUT, a reference or standard is needed to compare to the DUT reading. This could be another gauge, module, or even a sensor within the pressure controlling device. A general rule of thumb is to have the reference be at least four times as accurate as the DUT, also known as a 4 to 1 test accuracy ratio, or sometimes referred to as a test uncertainty ratio. Manual pressure pumps are one of the most common and budget friendly ways to generate pressure. They are often operated using a lever arm, scissor grip, or wheel, and sometimes feature an isolation valve for pressure stability. Pressure pumps will usually have at least two pressure ports for both the DUT and reference, and are often used in field work due to being both portable and reliable. Depending on the model, the reference gauge used in this setup may also feature built-in calibration programs that allow for more efficient testing and data recording. Deadweight testers are a more advanced pressure generation device usually found in calibration laboratories, as they offer one of the highest levels of accuracy for testing. The most accurate type of deadweight tester is a piston gauge, which obtains pressure by placing mass on a floating piston in a cylinder with a defined area. Since this pressure can be simplified to the equation pressure equals force over area with known variables, deadweight testers are incredibly accurate, allowing them to function as the reference in a test. This high accuracy is what designates them as a primary standard. Primary standards are used to calibrate secondary standards, for example a pressure gauge that will be used as a reference in the field. To keep the piston in the deadweight tester afloat, pressure is needed to offset the amount of mass on top of the piston. To do this effectively, a pressure supply, most commonly either a gas bottle containing nitrogen or an electronic pump, is connected to a pressure controller, which is connected to the deadweight tester. The controller takes the gas pressure from the source and outputs a more precise and stable pressure depending on what was set by the user. Some pressure controllers are able to generate their own pressure and may also have their own reference modules installed. Since calibrating using manual pumps can be very time consuming, and since pressure controllers and deadweight testers aren't very portable, a good way to meet in the middle is with an automatic calibrator. Just like advanced reference gauges, these calibrators have the ability to record and save test data to be uploaded to calibration software later. Some automatic calibrators also have reference modules installed and even generate their own pressure, thus simplifying and optimizing field calibrations. This way, one automatic calibrator can replace a pressure pump, reference gauge, and data logging equipment. Once test data has been collected, it should be entered or uploaded into a calibration software. These programs will usually function as both a library of tests and devices, and as a calculator to ensure the variables of the calibration are correctly defined and recorded. The final results of a test will be exported to a calibration certificate. If your device was calibrated using traceable standards, the details of each of them will be found here, as well as calibration results and the due date for the next calibration. We hope this video helped clear up some of the different ways a device can be calibrated. In the next video, we'll walk through a sample calibration to see how it might look in practice.